I was a boy when I saw my first uh, article about the high-speed bikes with the aero shells and I promptly went out and got some PVC pipe and saran wrap and discovered why you don't make an aero shell out of PVC pipe and saran wrap. Forty years on, I'm finally doing the thing. I've got floor mats that I can shape and attach to a, a metal frame and they give me the aero shell that I want and I don't have to build a fiberglass mold and I don't have to use resin. I'm tickled pink. I just can't even stand it right now how great this is. So what is hydroplaning? A boat at low speeds is what they call a displacement hull and at high speeds it sits up on top of the water and that transition happens at a very specific moment. At low speeds, the bow wave caused by moving through the water ripples all the way back, and the boat is being supported by buoyancy forces. At a high enough speed, this bow wave has traveled back so that the crest meets the back of the boat. And this is known as hull speed. So at this moment the boat is moving as efficiently as it can the amount of power it takes to go faster than this is a lot and one solution is to make your boat longer so if your speed is dictated by this hull speed by the crest meeting the back of the boat if you make a very long boat now when that crest reaches the back of the boat, you have a much faster boat. So these long skinny skulls are way faster than short little rowboats. That's one reason why power boats and speed boats are short. So that when this bow wave has dropped them in the, the trough, so the boat is literally like climbing uphill, they have enough power that they can crest over that hill and get on top of the water. And so this can happen, you know, at around 12 knots uh, with a, with a well-designed boat. And you can see that a long boat with a longer hull speed, by the time you get that crest all the way back here, you're going to be going, you know, 30 knots. And that's, that's just not a reasonable, uh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> housing for the paddle wheel and uh, I'm going to make the pattern a little bit differently this time. I've got a couple of uh, guide ribs here and I'll just make some paper patterns that uh, I can transfer to the foam.
Well, that was a pretty big day. Uh, I've got the aero shell on the front of the hydroplane. Uh, it's just floor mat material. The corrugated side uh, doesn't stick to anything very well. It's got a mold release on it and so I, I'm going to put that on the inside and the outside I will skin with fabric and gripper paint and uh, I have to let the seams cure for about 24 hours and then I can come along with the heat gun and I can finish shaping it. Alright, here's a step I've never done before. I have to attach the foam to the steel and I think the best way to do that is with the rubber cement. The rubber cement eats through the, uh, the mold release. It eats through everything. So that's why I'm not painting the steel first. I'll paint everything after. The other choice I'm making that I might regret later is gluing all this together and I still have the back of the vehicle to work on. But I really want to finish the, the front cowling here and get that video made and shared out. Now I'm just going to trim this and I do have a little bit of a ouch, uh, a little bit of a gap. Um, I think I'll fill it with uh, some liquid latex because I'm going to wrap this. I'm going to try the tight bond and some raw cotton. Cotton will shrink as the glue cures. If I cut it on the bias that I can get it to follow all, of the sh all this curve. The tricky thing is this is a big area to do before the glue starts to set. So, and it's um, a little bit warm today, but I've put on my dirty shirt so that when I get, inevitably, when I get too close to it, uh, I'm not going to worry about getting any on me. Overnight, the uh, cover has cured. This is more curvature than the fabric really wanted to do. Uh, I got this side nice and smooth. I had to make one slit, and then this side I did not get nice and smooth. Got a little plastic squeeze bottle, and it's got a mix of water and tight bond. I'm just gonna pull out a little hole here like that. I'm gonna also make an air escape hole. This is the tricky part. Come on. Got it. Getting a bunch of glue in here. Then working that glue around. And I don't want to put a lot of heat just until it starts to soften. I don't need to sand the fabric, I just use a little bit of water to knock down the tooth that's been raised by the glue. spending way too much time just doing this.